I just want to talk a little bit about transit routing when combining multiple separate virtual WANs or just to manage HubSpoke VNets and connecting them to the same express route circuit. And we come across this design pattern every now and again. You know, of course, we know that we should kind of keep Azure to Azure traffic off the express route circuits where possible. They should be used for traffic destined to on-prem. There are scenarios where we look for multi-region, uh, mergers and acquisitions, migrations to or from VUAN, etc. I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the patterns that are documented in Azure Docs, but uh, are quite uh, tricky to spot sometimes and maybe not uh, at the front of your mind when you think about Express Route. So we've got a very busy diagram. So let's just walk through this uh, very slowly. And um, I'll explain, um, you know, which each box is and why we're using colors, etc. So let's start with this, the core of the diagram, this virtual WAN here. This virtual WAN has got two hubs in it. And one of the hubs, the blue hub, let's say that's kind of my primary home. I've got my express route gateway in there. It's connected to an express route circuit. And hanging off that virtual WAN hub, I've got a couple of directly connected VNets, these blue boxes here. Over here, I've got a second virtual WAN hub, which doesn't have an express route gateway in. This is uh, not connected, therefore, to my circuit. It's got kind of a, a remote VNet, this orange VNet here with this address space. And I've got my on-prem bit down here, my on-prem data center. Uh, I've also got another virtual WAN over here. This is another virtual WAN hub in a completely separate parent level virtual WAN resource. And maybe you're connecting to uh, a different uh, business you've acquired. Uh, maybe you're connecting to a separate virtual WAN resource for some other reason, some B2B uh, scenario. And inside of that virtual WAN hub, there's also an express route gateway. So if you're familiar with express route circuits, and when you connect two gateways together, we've got this behavior where the express route circuit kind of acts as a router, so it bounces the routes from left to right. So uh, you would sort of look at this and um, instinctively think, okay, well, you know, everything on the right can talk to everything on the left, and it's just one big three, big, big uh, layer three routing domain. And whilst that's accurate for sort of VNets hanging off these hubs inside of Azure, it's not accurate for routes that are designated by Azure as originating from transit sources. I'll leave uh, links in the documents below to where we call out these, these caveats, but they can catch you out in designs on Azure if you're sort of expecting or presuming too much of the platform. Uh, I'll give you some examples of these transitive routes, or let's say routes that are uh, definitely not directly connected to the uh, hub that's running the gateway. So here I've got a virtual WAN hub uh, that is doing sort of lots of transit things. Uh, probably you won't be doing all of these at once, but I've got three examples. One is I've got a BGP connection to a NVA in a spoke. This could be an SD-WAN uh, environment, for example, which is then originating a loopback of 987.6-32 to sort of simulate a remote SD-WAN branch. So this is kind of a network which is coming in by BGP, and this network could be outside of Azure. Similarly, I've got another VNet here, and rather than using BGP to get to this NVA down here, I've just got a static route. So I'm saying this loopback 555.32, go to this VNet connection. Again, this uh, loopback, this slash 32, could be some remote branch hanging outside of Azure, you know, P2S client, something like that. That's my second uh, transit destination. And then over here, I've got another virtual WAN hub with a virtual network connected to it. And this is using virtual WAN hub to hub to get to this remote VNet over here. And this VNet, uh, this virtual WAN hub doesn't have a gateway in it. So we're sort of hopping into virtual WAN, going across hub to hub. Uh, this could be sort of to any region elsewhere in, in the world, and then going to this VNet down here. 
And all of those routes that you're looking at there, the, the red loopback, uh, the static loopback, the BGP loopback, and this orange VNet here is definitely going to get sent down to the circuit. We'll look at that in a second. And therefore on-premise, uh, which is connected via express route, that is going to be able to reach into uh, any of these networks, sort of benefit from the, the virtual WAN transitive routing down to uh, on-prem via express route. But the kind of point of this video is that same reachability won't extend to some other areas of Azure and we'll look at virtual WAN hubs and um, the green box down here that you can't see is a, a regular a customer hub with a normal gateway inside of it. So let's just uh, first of all hop onto our express route circuit and I'll show you how these routes appear and we'll just confirm that yes indeed the virtual WAN hub one is advertising all of the, these routes down to the circuit. Okay so I've hopped into the circuit blade in the portal onto my peer in I'm looking at the route table here. Let's start to assess some of these uh, routes. If I filter by next hop there there is some stuff in this route table that we should ignore because kind of multiple labs in here but let's concentrate on routes that I've got a next hop of this 192.168.222 which I know is my gateway inside of the blue VWAN hub. So we can see that um, we're getting N1 which is the VNet with my NVA inside. We're getting the loopback from the NVA. In fact you can see here AS65002 which is what I've got my Cisco CSR uh, BGP config set as. We can see here that we're getting 192.168.168. That's my orange VNet over here. Again, we can sort of get a bit more information there. Whenever you see 65.520 in these routes, that sort of VWAN hub to hub originated. We can see our 5555 loopback from an via static route, uh, which is there. But you don't see any sort of next uh, additional AS path in the in the path there because it's static route, so it's coming straight from 65.515, which is my virtual WAN hub. And we can see some other bits and bobs in here, um, which, like I say, are not related. We can see we've got our on-prem. This is my on-prem data center. Uh, but the point is, every uh, route we talked about, whether it's directly connected, transit originated, is all visible to the express route circuit on-prem, which is express route connected can leverage reachability to all of these networks. But happy days, working as expected so far. This is where we need to uh, do our double clicking on understanding uh, the transitive routes in Azure. So now let's go over to our virtual WAN hub. And just to remind you, this is another parent level virtual WAN, uh, a VWAN hub with an express route gateway connected to the same circuit. Uh, I've done a bit of homework there and, and prepped this, but let me show you it live in the, in the portal. So here's my hub. I've just gone to effective routes on the purple hub here. Uh, this is the, the dump of the, the routes. But let, let's zoom in and I've color coded it to make it a bit more obvious here. So we see on this purple VWAN hub, I've got my on-prem data center. Makes sense. I've got my blue virtual WAN hub. And I've got the directly connected spokes. I know I can sort of hairpin via express route for my directly connected spokes. You know, of course, we would advise not doing that if you, if possible. You know, migrate any spokes to a common VWAN uh, or use VWAN hub to hub natively in, in the same parent level VWAN resource. But if it is required for a temporary period of time, that is going to work. So this, this VNet is going to hairpin down here. We've got some green networks, um, which We'll come on to it later, but this is another uh, customer managed hub spoke gateway VNet hanging off the same circuit. So this this hairpin in will work. But notice we are missing a lot of routes here. We don't have the orange route. We don't have either of the red routes. We don't have any of the transit originated routes. So effectively, what's happening here when those transit routes come in, uh, the circuit does reflect them this way. So this route here will get reflected up here. Similarly, the red routes, you know, this, this route here and the static route will get reflected up here. But this gateway and the logic in the hub, when it passes routes into the route table, 
whether it be the effective routes of the hub that we're looking at or any directly connected uh, spokes, it's not going to allow those transit routes to come in. And the reasons for that are related to the, the transit origination of the routes and the fact that this virtual WAN hub could also be transitive. So this virtual WAN hub could also be connected to some other networks. You could have networks outside of Azure coming into Azure, helping via express route, talking to other networks outside of Azure. So whenever you, whenever you have that scenario of non-Azure networks, non-Azure network coming into Azure, going via express route, that's where you should be thinking, oh, you know, double click on that. Um, maybe that won't work because the platform's denying it. Okay, so now we understand that you know, sometimes we have to um, think about this, this transit route filtering uh, via express route to other virtual WANs. Now let's introduce uh, the, the green box. So again, if we look down here, we've got a green hub. I've just connected another regular VNet with an express route gateway over to the same circuit. And inside of here, I've got a gateway and I've grabbed the effective routes from the gateway. If we look down here, things look different now. Uh, we get all of our routes. We get all of our local routes. We get our uh, regular VWAN routes. We get our on-prem routes. But we get the transit originated routes inside of this network, which can be consumed by the local hub and any spoke VNets. The spoke VNets could come into the gateway down here. Uh, they could bounce up here and go to this SD-WAN network or all via express route. And now, of course, we would uh, recommend you optimize the design and look at ways of not leveraging the express route transit. But the point here is it would be technically functional. Now, the bit I want to call out here is the sort of the second part of this video is this is all working in, in this regular uh, hub VNet. But I want to show you how the behavior changes when we introduce an Azure root server. I'm going to introduce an Azure root server here. Just introducing the root server itself uh, and even peering it to uh, maybe an NVA up here that's connected to another SD-WAN network, that isn't going to change the behavior. But if I do that and enable the branch to branch setting on ARS, if I set that to on, I'll see my behavior change. So just, re just remember with the, the branch to branch setting to on, that causes external networks that come in via the MBA to be reflected to the express route gateway and therefore back down to the MSEE. So again, back to what I said earlier, now we have a scenario with branch to branch turned on where we have external networks connected to this environment and we're expecting perhaps reachability to other external networks via express route. And again, that's where we should have the um, reminder in our brain, oh, maybe that won't work. Let me just show you the, the current config of the green hub. Um, these are the effective routes uh, as of now. You can see here, this is the, um, I, I dumped the, the BGP routes from the gateway and, and popped them in that document and color coded them. But I have deployed a root server in this hub. And we can see at the moment, the root server has branch to branch disabled. So I'll show you this in, in real time. Look at these uh, routes here. Uh, so I've got the 5.5, .5, I've got my loopbacks, and I've got the, uh, the remote orange route inside of this uh, green VNet. I'm gonna flip this to enabled and save it and come back when that's finished. Okay, the, the GUI is still updating there, but the actual uh, data plane is effective. So I've reran that command, the command to get the, the routes from this green express route gateway. You see before we had all those routes. Now we don't have either the loopbacks or the orange route. So just to explain that again, those routes that we had before, the orange remote hub route and the red injected transit routes, they're coming down via express route and getting reflected to this gateway up here. And when we have Azure root server with branch to branch on, so the ability for both ends now to be transitive, those routes get stripped out. So effectively, the, what we looked at before with those routes there, they're crossed out now. They're no longer uh, reachable 
because of the transit potential of both ends. I also want to show you that uh, the same thing is true in reverse. So I've moved my, my NVA simulating an attached remote network to my customer managed HubSpoke environment here. I've connected it to uh, the Azure root server and I'm advertising the same loopback. You can see here I've got my, my root server config with one peer specified. And we can see if we look on the Express Route Gateway routes again, that loopback is now learned uh, from Azure Root Server 10104. Uh, it's locally connected, so I've sort of shifted that VNet over here. So um, branch to branch is still turned on, which means I'm reflecting the route down to my Express Route circuit. And we can quickly verify that. This is my circuit uh, root table dump again. We can see that route there. The next stop is 10, 10, 0, 13, and 12, which is my gateway in, in this green hub here. Whereas before, I had that, that CSR connected up here. So uh, this, that's been removed now because I've, I've moved it over there. And that's reflected in the, we're looking at the circuit dump here. It's showing the next stop over there. So that loopback is um, sent down to on-prem where it can be consumed. So on-prem can kind of come in and go like this. But if we look on other transit destinations or transit potential destinations in Azure, uh, like for example, my virtual WAN hubs, uh, both of them, we will see that that route uh, is not available. Firstly, I'm looking here at my, my purple single hub. You can see on the route tables, we don't see that loop back anywhere. So even though it, the circuit is reflecting it here, it's been filtered out before it can enter. So the gateway is sort of filtering it out. Uh, also, if I look on my route table of my other virtual WAN hub, which is still connected, it's got the same uh, behavior. You see that that loop back's disappeared. It's still got the local loop backs, which I've left there before, but it doesn't have the the loopback that's coming in this way and getting advertised this way, it's been filtered out by the gateway. Okay, well, I hope you found that uh, interesting, that sort of whirlwind tour of transit routes in Azure. I suppose the, the key takeaway here is, you know, just be careful whenever you use an express route transit in Azure. You know, we always say try and avoid it for Azure to Azure routing. You know, by all means, use express route uh, in resilient fashion back to on-prem. But for Azure to Azure, VNet to VNet, VUAN to v, VUAN, VUAN to VNet, uh, we've got to be careful, uh, not only for performance and resilience reasons using Express Route, but also some patterns just don't work on Azure. Azure is not set up to allow, as we said, environments with transit potential, other environments with transit potential. If you really do need to use uh, Azure as a transit scenario uh, for those use cases, you'd be looking at building environments that uh, leverage products designed to do that, such as uh, in this diagram, if we've got a common VWAN, we could have a transit network over here and a transit network over here, and they could communicate you know, with firewalls and routing intent, et cetera. That's perfectly fine. Uh, similarly, if you had two express route circuits, you could global reach them. Now, these are products that are designed and certified uh, for transit use. Anyway, hope you found that useful. Any questions? I know it's a tricky subject. Uh, leave them in the, the comments and I'll catch you next time.